geometric progression. Now, well, last class, we dealt a bit with arithmetic progressions, and you learned that with APs, you're going to have a first term, and you're also going to have a common difference. Well, geometric progressions are along the same baselines, except with JPs. For example, what you're going to have is not a common difference. Let's observe here. Now, if you were to find the difference between 2 and 6, that's 4. Also, if you were to find the difference between 6 and 8, that's not 4. So clearly, this is not an AP. Let's try dividing and see what happens. Now, if we were to divide the second number by the first, we're going to get 3. And if you were also to divide the third number by the previous one, you would also get 3. So you notice that with division, or rather with a ratio, you are getting the same value. So that's the only difference. With a geometric progression, the series, the sequence is one in which the numbers are increasing by something called a common ratio, and that value is denoted by R. So for this question in particular, R has a value of 3. Sometimes the value of R can be a fraction. Just be very careful when you're finding the common ratio. You always divide by the number that's just before. So it's the third, the third term divided by the second term. It's the 15th term divided by the 14th term, always by the one before. So that value on the denominator always needs to be the term before. Once you've successfully found the common ratio, you identify if your question has given you the first value, and in this case, they have. They have us given us the first value, A, as 2. And similarly, just like for APs, we have a special formula to represent the nth term in the progression. For a GP, the nth term is simply given by A, R, to the n minus 1. And it would do you well to memorize and not confuse the nth term of a GP with the nth term of an AP. Now, in this question, for example, if you were to find the third term, you can use the formula AR to the n minus 1, where A has a value of 2, R has a value of 3, n would have a value of 3, so that's 3 minus 1, 2. 3 twos are 9, 9 twos are 18. And you would clearly see that for your GP, the third term definitely is equal to 18. So the formula definitely holds. Now, what if this question asks us to find how many terms do we have in this entire progression? Well, because they gave us the last term, L, we can actually use that along with our n term formula to find the value of n. Let's see how it applies. So we have the last term being 1,458. And we're interested in finding out what term is that a part of in our sequence? We know it's the last term, but essentially how many values does our sequence have for it to be the last term? We want to know the value of n. Now, in this question, we know the values of a and r. So it's just a simple matter of substitution. You would get a is 2, r has a value of 3 to the power of n minus 1. Dividing throughout by 2, would give us 729 is equal to 3 and minus 1. Now over here, a very easy way to work this question, if you can see it, 
is simply to write both sides as powers of 3. Rules of exponents, if you have the base to be the same, you can equate your powers, right? So this would imply that n minus 1 must be 6, so therefore n has to be a value of 7. Therefore, in this geometric progression, it must mean that 1458 happened to be the seventh term. So that's another useful way you can apply the nth term formula to help you figure out how many terms or what's the value of that particular term, what's the value of n for that sequence. Now let's look at a case that produces those simultaneous equations that you guys are wondering about. What if a question says uh, the, um, the second term, right, the second term of a GP is given by 514 and that the fourth term is given by 5 over 64. What do we do? Well, since the nth term is given by a r to the n minus 1, then the second term would be a r to the power of 2 minus 1, which is 1. Similarly, the fourth term would be a r to the 4 minus 1, which is 3. And essentially what you did here is create two simultaneous equations. If you were to divide these three equations, that would eliminate a, and you would get uh, r squared being equal to, I think it's 1 over 16, such that r is a quarter. You want to take the positive value of this, okay? Now, similarly, um, once you have found for the value of r, you can substitute this into equation 1 or 2, and that simply gives us a value of a being equal to 5. You can work this out on your own and test to make sure uh, that's the situation there. But Generally, when you are dealing with simultaneous equations in a GP, um, they tend to give you the values of various terms and you just have to equate them to the nth term formula. And you can use that to find the common ratio. You can use it to find A. Sometimes they can ask you after a question like this, what's the seventh term, All right? What's term seven? Well, term seven will just be given by AR to the power of six and you have the value of A, and you have the value of R, so you can just simply go ahead and substitute your values. All right, so just like APs as well, we do have more formulas, and I'll just state them because they're pretty straightforward. We'll be getting a lot more into these formulas um, next term, right? But I just want to state the formulas for now so you know that they exist. Exist. All right, so similarly for GP, you can find you have a sum formula that goes like this. You have the sum of the first n terms of a GP being given by this formula here, all over 1 minus r. Of course, because you have 1 subtract r on the denominator, you want to have the condition where r is not equal to 0, because we do not want this to be an indeterminate form. All right, so this formula you can memorize, but it is on your formula sheet. And once you know the values of A, R, and N, you can find the sum of those terms, of those first terms in your GP. And there's also even a case where you can find the sum to infinity. Right, there's another formula that says the sum to infinity for a GP is given by a over 1 subtract r, where r has to lie between the values of uh, 1 and negative 1. All right, so once again, these two formulas can be found on your formula sheet. They can be very um, easy to use. It's just a basic substitution once you know your values of a and r. Also, if they give you the sum to infinity, for example, to be 10, and they give you the value of a to be 8, you have one unknown r. You can just substitute, create an equation and solve. So what I want to really show you guys right now is a real life example of how GPs are applicable and how you can actually use um, your formulas to work out stuff. 
that's happening to you right now. All right, so I want to pull a question that I have created. All right, this is my original question. So this question is copyright to those viewing it. Of course, with my permission, I will allow it to be copied. All right, so I'm just trying to paste it here. All right, and let's enlarge this question here. All right, so relevance of this question, you can see COVID-19 popping up right there. <laughs> All right, so I thought of it a lot and um, I was wondering how I could show you guys a real life example of this question. And I thought about COVID-19. What's better? All right, so let's look at this question and do a little bit of discussions, right? First of all, you all know COVID-19, um, the vaccine centers are working very hard and in order to work hard, they need money. They need money from different sources to fund the testing and the experimentation of this vaccine and money doesn't come from anywhere. It comes from people who don't need, it comes from the government, it comes from companies who want their, who wants the vaccine labeled after their names if it becomes successful, right? So at the end of the day, you're going to have a lot of businesses and stuff donating. So for example, in this question, the COVID-19 vaccine center receives a donation from a business on a yearly basis in order to improve the quality of the vaccine. Now, this is a reality that's going to happen in our lifetime. Eh? Every year, different centers are going to need continuous donations in order for the vaccine to be improved because as the virus mutates, they're going to have to keep changing the way the vaccine um, is created or how, how the chemical reactions or whatever happens is done, right? That's chemistry there. Now, so this has to be done on a yearly basis, the donations that is. What if donations started in the year 2020, which was last year when COVID began, right? March 2020. They're saying COVID-19, I believe, because it really happened from the year before in, you know, that country. But I would just say that um, in this question, uh, the donations are starting from 2020 when it became more international, right? So the donation started in the year 2020. And what are the initial sum of money received, right? The first donation they gave was $800,000. This could be in US, it could be in any amount, just $800,000, right? Um, now on reading a question like this, if you're thinking along the lines of like um, GPs, right, or APs, the first thing you do know is that, hmm, well then the first value A must be equal to $800,000 because that's like the first term. Now, you don't know if it's going to be an AP or a GP just yet. You have to continue reading the question to figure it out. So then they say every year after that. So the first year they get like 100%. Then every year after that, the vaccine center will receive 90% off. Know those keywords, 90% off, right? That's like nine tenths off. That's like finding a multiplication. The word off means to multiply. Remember that for geometric progressions, that's the one that has a ratio off. It's multiplication, division kind of thing. So it must mean that based on the words that they have, the vaccine center every year, the donation is changing by 90%, 90% of the previous one. It must mean that that's a common ratio, not a difference. So this must be a GP they're talking about. And if it's a GP they're talking about also, then R must be 90%. And because for maths, you want to shift that 90% to a actual fraction, we're going to make it 90 over 100, which becomes 9 tenths, which is just 0 0.9. So boom, reading that bit of uh, question there, we have found it to be one, a GP. Two, we have found our initial donation value of A. And we've also found the common ratio to be 0.9. So pretty much anything you ask us in this question, we could figure it out because we have all the standards that we need. Now they go on to say 
By the way, for those of you wondering, what do they mean when they say every year after that, the vaccine center will receive 90% of the donation from the previous year? Let's just write it out. So for the first year, right, year one, they are receiving $800,000, right? Now the second year, they are saying that they're going to get 90% of the donation from the previous year. Now if the previous year, the donation was $800,000, right? That's 800, I'm typing it in my calculator now. <laughs> Then 90% of that is actually $720,000. And then the third year, the donation is going to be 90% of the previous year. So for the third year, you'd have to find 0.9 multiplied by 720,000, which is $648,000. Now, you'd notice that it keeps... Uh, dropping the donations that is and there's a reality in this in the real world because once you have successfully generated an initial vaccine the years after that you will just need to tweak tweak those vaccines and tweaking just requires small touches so you would not require such a huge donation and companies know this which is why they wouldn't give the same consistent donation year after year after year you know so yeah so this is a realistic question here all right, now what is the actual question asking us to find? Well, they're saying calculate the year. Calculate the year. So we want to find N, right? And what year? Calculate the year in which the donation actually falls below $100,000. Now, what they are asking us to find, right, is actually the term or the end term at which, remember, a term or the end value, the end term of the sequence is given by AR to the N minus 1. So essentially what they want us to find is the case scenario where that end term, that value, is going to be less than $100,000. That is essentially what they want to find. In which year does the donation fall below $100,000, right? When is the term or the value less than $100,000? So we can do a quick setup for this question, right? Any the, um, the setup will look like this. All right, well, term, first of all, the term is given by AR to the N minus 1. And we have to find N such that that value is actually less than $100,000. Creating that setup, we will get A as a value of $800,000. So that's $800,000 thousand dollars r has a value of 0.9 so that's 0 0.9 to the power of n minus one remember n is what we want to find in which year right would that value be less than a hundred thousand dollars now i know you're seeing a lot of zeros but actually they're gonna all cancel they're gonna cancel very very nicely actually we're gonna end up getting 0 0.9 to the power of n minus one is simply less than all over 800,000, all of these will cancel and you'll just end up getting 0 0.9 to the n minus one being less than one over eight. All right, um, now when you encounter usually powers like this, last time we were able to put uh, both sides to the same base, but in this case, nine over 10 can't we can't find a way to make 9 over 10 look like 1 over 8 so that the bases are the same and we can equate powers. So in this case, we'll have to apply a bit of logs to work all this. And applying logs for this is kind of straightforward. If you guys um, remember how to apply logs for a question like this, um, first we want to bring down that power. So that will be n minus 1 of log 9 
is just simply equal to, well, less than log of the right hand side. And from here, it's just a matter of um, division. So you get n minus one is just simply, um, you're gonna have that less than uh, log of one over eight. And you can perform your division right here over log of nine. And then finally, one more step, I'm trying to scroll up here. Our last step will be n, the less than, carry across your one, uh, plus log of one over eight over log nine. And you can record that value in your calculator and write it down. Now, I want you guys to, um, to understand that in questions like these, it's very important to use as exact values as you can. So you want to try to plug in log of one over eight as a fraction using your ABC function, because whatever value you get for this question, um, remember they're asking what year, let's just go back up to the question here, right? They're asking us the year in which your donation falls below. So if you have a value of, um, say, uh, say n works out to be around um, uh, 21.3. You want to go as close as possible to the, based on the sign they're looking at, if it's a greater than sign, you'll have to use 21. If it's a less than sign, you know, you approximate it as close as possible to your answer. So be very vigilant when you are doing questions that involve logs and signs. But essentially, this is a real life example of working out a question like this. Very straightforward if you sit and think about it. But sometimes beginning questions like these are <laughs> the issues <laughs> that students have to begin with. So you just, it's just like a matter of, I would say, just practicing over and over and over and getting very, very diligent when it comes to your laws of algebra, basic exponential rules, basic rules of logs, because they're going to pop up in questions. Partial fractions pops up in questions, a lot of different topics. That in itself is a topic, but it pops up in binomial, it pops up in newton raphson it pops up in a lot of stuff, right? So it's very, very important that you guys understand your basic, um, basic algebra skills. All right, so that's a wrap for um, geometric progressions. And if you guys have any more questions, you can hit me up. I'm always available once I'm awake. And I wish you guys all the best and happy studying. Bye.